KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's April 5th. Happy to be with you, Steph. Yes, happy Friday. Uh, we got the, the dark memo, even though we're cheery this morning because it is Friday. Yes, we are cheery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm channeling that. We yes. are cheery this morning. <laughs> and, and I'm still enjoying the nice weather, you know, in the afternoon hours. It's really, did you oh, get outside? Yeah, my, my younger brother's in town. Good morning, Jonathan. He's probably oh, he's up? I don't know, probably oh. not. <laughs> uh, but we went on a nice walk yesterday, and it was it was warm. But if you're in the shade, Mike, and with that low humidity, it was nice. Right, but yeah, it was pretty darn hot. We did make it up to 88 degrees yesterday, basically 10 above normal, and it's still going to be a warm one again today. Now, as far as where we're starting off this morning, it's not as cool as where it has been just because we were so warm yesterday and we haven't lost all that heat yet. We're at 56 right now. We'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches because as you can see there, that bottom number, we still have very dry air, light wind, clear skies out there. Another great day, but this is the end of it. 85 degrees. Once again, we are going to be, you know, five, six degrees on average uh, across the board above respective normals. And as far as the aquifer, well, no surprise here. It continues to drop down, even though it was just a little bit Bit, two tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours because didn't have any rain with this gorgeous weather. Oak did come down substantially, uh, about uh, well almost a, a third of what it was the previous day when it was up to like 25,000. But still, it's on the high side. Hopefully, we can be done with the oak season sooner than later. All right, take a look at some of the temperatures around the area. You know, this time yesterday, we were well down in the mid 40s and then continued down from there in the mid and upper 40s since below 50. So we're up, uh, like I said, a, a good chunk, but still we will, like I said, be cooling off as we go on through. And this is the water vapor imagery, the darker shade of gray and then also this kind of brownish tannish color means that it is bone dry upstairs in the atmosphere. That's why we had the gorgeous blue skies yesterday. That's why we're going to have the gorgeous blue skies again today. Windy conditions today as well with the dry air and that's prompting red flag warnings in our western counties starting at one o'clock this afternoon up until seven o'clock this evening. As far as today, sunny 85, like I said, windy. That's it. Humidity comes back in here, surges back in overnight. We're going to have some mist drizzle in the morning staying cloudy throughout the day, just kind of eh, sort of a day. We'll be in the mid 70s, closer to normal. And then we're going to have a chance for some rain late tomorrow night. A little front moves through here, so that's going to sort of salvage Sunday. Some sunshine, nice lower humidity, and then humidity comes right back in here. Of course, for Monday, plenty of humidity, and that usually equates to some lower clouds around here, along with some high clouds. Not the greatest eclipse viewing weather. Unfortunately, we'll have a couple of uh, showers and thunderstorms developing late Monday night and then extending got a little bit of a decent window of rain going into the uh, middle part of next week. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority, Mr. Marquez. Good morning, sir. What's going on? All right. Yeah. Good morning, Mike, and good Friday to everyone out there having out uh, headed out to, to the roads right now as we take a look here at an ongoing situation that we have on the east side right now. We're looking at Loop 410 southbound. That that would be the exit ramp that's closed right now because of a crash uh, that happened around 3:30 this morning. Uh, basically, what we were told was that uh, one of those overhead signs was hit there at that exit right there at Rigsby Avenue. So this is our camera at East Houston, and you see as you go a little bit further south, we are seeing some backups here in this area. Again, trying to get more information on what exactly is going on there. So as we take a look at our maps here, Loop 410 southbound right there at Rigsby Avenue, the exit ramp is closed because of an overhead sign that was struck by a driver. Uh, uh, still trying to gather more details on the situation going on there, but we are starting to see some traffic build up there over to East Houston. All right, construction. This was a big issue yesterday. Uh, hopefully they can clear things out a little bit earlier this morning here as we take a look here. 35 southbound, three main lanes closed here. That's going to be through six o'clock at least. So again, on the far northeast side, if you are headed down south to the Live Oak area or the Forum area, keep in mind that Shirts Parkway to Forum Parkway, we have three main lanes closed. Already seen some traffic build up in this area right there. The rest of the city, everything else is looking good. Again, just trying to keep an eye, our eye on what's going on there on the east side of town, and we will give you more information as it becomes available to us. But again, 410 South at East Houston and the Rigsby Avenue area have a crash there that, have, that has closed that exit ramp. Stephanie, Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ.
Well, where is Caleb Harris? That is the question a New Braunfels family has asked since their 21-year-old son disappeared about a month ago. The Harris family held vigils in Corpus Christi where he was last seen. And their hometown last night, the Texas A&M Corpus Christi student was last seen March 4th at his off-campus apartment in the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn Road. Corpus Christi police tell us that Caleb's roommate saw him in their apartment around 2.20 a.m. the day he disappeared. He said he was going to order Uber Eats to have for lunch, and by 3.03 a.m., police say Caleb sent a friend a picture of a small bridge over a drainage ditch near his apartment complex. His phone was turned off less than 10 minutes later. Caleb's mother, Becky Harris, says waiting for answers over the past month has not been easy. I have thought about it a lot. I have no idea what happened. We, I, I feel strongly that he was taken. Now, Caleb's parents are not offering a $50,000 reward for information that could lead to Caleb's safe return. Well, this morning, two half-brothers are now booked in the county jail. San Antonio police say they were hiring undocumented immigrants and then not paying them. Juan Carlos Velasquez Flores and Jose de Jesus Velasquez own a trucking transportation company, VSR. The, man, the men face charges of continuous human trafficking. Detectives accuse the brothers of targeting Mexican undocumented people to work for them. A handful of victims tell police the men did not pay them and would threaten their immigration status. They're coming here to the United States to, to work, to find a job, to support their families. Uh, so they're getting taken advantage of um, just because of maybe who they are, or where they came from. That's unfair to them. The second is to the public, you know, making people work more, especially truck drivers. I mean, such an important job in the United States. And you got these guys who are driving um, long hours, could fall asleep on the wheel. It's dangerous for the public. The company started in 2021. Police got a tip through the National Trafficking Hotline. Anyone who may have been a victim of these business owners are urged to come forward to police despite their immigration status. And right now you are looking at the person who will take over the city of Uvalde's police department. Homer Delgado joined the department about 11 months ago as the assistant chief, and Delgado has been serving as interim chief. He officially becomes police chief this Saturday. Just two weeks ago, Delgado met with Cross, the guardian of Uzziah Cross, one of the 19 children killed during the Robb Elementary shooting. Now they spoke outside the Uvalde police department where Cross was protesting the city's independent investigation of the law enforcement response. Delgado publicly offered his support of that protest. Today, President Joe Biden is traveling to Baltimore following that deadly bridge collapse earlier last week. Biden is expected to meet with some of the family of the six construction workers who died after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed. According to the White House, Biden is also expected to meet with state and local officials along with the tour of the wreckage. Since the accident, crews have been working to remove portions of that bridge. And one person was killed and two others were hospitalized Thursday after a section of a crane fell from a building in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Now crews were in the process of stepping the crane during the construction of a high rise building when a section being prepared to increase the crane's height came loose. Construction worker fell with the crane section causing fatal injuries. Now the crane section that fell landed on a nearby bridge damaging at least two vehicles. Well, Israel is taking steps to increase the humanitarian aid flow into Gaza today by allowing shipments into two more openings and expanding another. Now, the shift in tactics comes after a phone call between Israel and the U.S. As ABC's Christine Christian Cordial reports, that call is warning that the U.S.'s support for Israel and Gaza could shift. It's a new day in the U.S.'s relationship with Israel after a phone call that warned when it comes to the civilian cost of this war, there must be another way forward. If there are not changes to their approach, um, it is very likely we're going to change our approach. Within hours of a tense phone call between President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel is now allowing shipments through a busy port, reopening one border crossing and expanding another. Biden also called for an immediate ceasefire as part of a deal to release hostages. Growing frustration prompted the phone call after seven aid workers were killed by an IDF airstrike this week. The White House hasn't elaborated on what kinds of changes would satisfy or by when. And how much time are you giving them? to make these changes, to implement these concrete Again, steps. We, we would hope to see some announcements of changes here in coming hours and days, and I'll leave it at that. 
Of the seven World Central Kitchen Aid workers killed, one, Jacob Flickinger, was a Canadian-American dual citizen and Sandy LeClerc's partner. He was a part of me. And he's such a, a loving father to his son. According to Israeli media, Israel has suspended two military commanders following the airstrike. It promises a swift, thorough investigation. World Central Kitchen is calling for an independent one. We need the truth of what happened because the situation is so unclear. So please, Mr. Biden, give us the truth of what happened. CIA Director Bill Burns is expected to travel to Egypt this weekend for more hostage negotiations. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Washington. We've been working hard over winter training uh, the last three months, putting together the show. Happening this weekend, the Thunderbirds are in San Antonio for the Great Texas Air Show at Joint Base San Antonio Randolph. The show is a huge draw for plane enthusiasts. So you're going to see us flying low, we're going to be flying fast, and we're going to be flying together, and it's going to look beautiful. Best part, it's free. So you'll see lots of aircraft today practicing and getting ready for the show this weekend. Gates open at 9 on both Saturday and Sunday, and performances start at 11, and the Thunderbirds, they will hit the sky at 3 p.m., on both days, Saturday and Sunday. A lot of people are excited about that. I hope the weather look, works look, out. Look, Mike is so yes. excited. He's literally <laughs> giddy. When, like Mike. Aww. Yes, so uh, it brings back wonderful memories. Very like neat. Giddy little boy. All right, it's 5'11 and 56 degrees. Well, teens and weight loss medication. Up next, what doctors think of the recent trend of teens turning to prescription weight loss medications to treat obesity. Now, we started in the 40s yesterday, got all the way up to 88, according to Mike. Today, similar, 56 degrees, not as cool this morning, but that humidity, he says, is going to creep back in tomorrow. And he's also going to have that eclipse forecast for us when we come back. Well, a growing number of teenagers are turning to weight loss medication since the FDA approved its use in adolescents as young as 12 years old. ABC's Andrea Fuji has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, teens and weight loss medication. I would do workouts. I would eat healthy. I would do the same diets as my mom when I was only like 12 or 13 just because I wanted to have a normal body. With help from her mom, Dina, 16-year-old Demi Buckley of Saginaw, Michigan, is one of a multitude of teens turning to prescription weight loss medications to treat obesity. She was up to 198 pounds when we had decided to go ahead and let her try this medication. I first started on the 0.25, I think it was, and I didn't notice a lot of change right away. I wasn't gaining any weight, which was very big for me. Um, and then I started going up in dosages, and that's when I started to see the weight actually drop. But what do doctors have to say? We'll have much more on teens and weight loss medication coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrea Fuji, ABC News. It's 516 and 56 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide with that 56 degrees. Well, out there at I-10 ETSA Boulevard, uh, kind of a mess right now. We are going to be checking in with RJ Marcus, who's very busy trying to update us on the situation. Dad, are you certain this is going to work? Nothing to it. Are you for imprint certain? Certainty matters. Like the certainty of 4imprint, your home for high-quality promotional gear, including exclusive items and brands they love. Printed perfectly and guaranteed to arrive on time. To wow your clients, nail your next event, or inspire your team, check out 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. Lactate is 100% real milk, just without the lactose. Delicious, too. Just ask my old friend Kevin. Nothing like enjoying a cold one while watching the game. Who's winning? We are, my friend. We are. Airwick. How far would you go to set the ambience of your space? Try the Airwick way with Airwick Essential Mist. Infused with natural essential oils to fill your moment with immersive fragrance for up to 45 days. Now that's a breath of fresh Airwick. 
camp this weekend, and I know <laughs> if you Thunderbirds are watching, if anybody would like to help me uh -huh. celebrate my 24th anniversary Thunderbirds, I'd nice. be more than happy oh, to fly nice. with you. I'm just going to throw that out Mike there. Mike so. just <laughs> gave <laughs> me all the I details. I just gave her the play-by-play -play like 24 years ago, Sarah. I got on that point. How excited. You know I'll what? You need to pull the pictures out for us so we can show them again. I've got video at home I can run. Oh, home video. Video. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, today. <laughs> so, uh, well, we look forward to that this weekend, and we know a lot of people will be doing a lot of different things, also with yes. the Valera Open mm -hmm. in town, so the roads will be extremely busy. Yeah, and then people coming in for the eclipse to get a little bit of a jump start on all the traffic that we're going to see out there. And speaking of traffic, we're taking a look here. I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. I saw them kind of adjusting some of the cameras here, but uh, if you take a look out there on the far right-hand side, you're going to see a crash there. This is going to be westbound at uh, UTSA Boulevard. So initially I was looking at this and I thought, well, maybe this might just be con some uh, construction that that's going on out there, but that is definitely not the case. There is a crash there, I-10 West right now at UTSA Boulevard. Basically the exit ramp to 1604 is shut down on the far northwest side. Want to show you another incident that we're following right now because we are seeing pretty good backup here on uh, the east side of town. This is going to be Loop 410 southbound over there at uh, Rigsby Avenue. So this camera here is the 410 camera at East Houston, but we do have the exit ramp closed right now because of a uh, because of a crash from earlier where the driver uh, is believed to have hit the overhead sign. So we see a couple emergency vehicles in this area right now causing some pretty good delays here. As we take a quick look here at our maps, again, 410 southbound Rigsby Avenue exit ramp closed because, uh, again, reported that a driver has struck one of the overhead signs there. Already seen some traffic build up there in that area. Here's the crash here. I-10 westbound at Loop 1604. Again, the exit ramp to Loop 1604 is closed off of I-10 West and we are seeing a little bit of buildup there in this area and speaking of construction I-35 southbound still have this situation going on Shirts Parkway to Forum Parkway three main lanes closed hopefully through 6 a.m. they could clear up all that construction going on there but already seeing some delays in that area all right yeah so there's a lot going on across the city right now and speaking of a lot going on our Texas highways they're expected to be packed this weekend here before, during and after the eclipse. But one thing to keep in mind if you are hitting the roads, is of course protecting our state wildflowers. The colorful flowers will be present along many Texas highways during the total solar eclipse. And to ensure the wildflowers look their best and can continue to come back year after year, drivers are being asked to not drive over, park on or trample through the flowers. You know, we have quite a bit of wildflowers that are out. We want to make sure that those wildflowers are not impacted by people driving um, on the shoulders or, you know, on the meet in the medians where those wildflowers may be. All right, so some interesting uh, factoids here. There are more than 5,000 species of wildflowers and native grasses that decorate Texas roadsides. And not only do they beautify our highways, we're, we're going to confirm this with Sarah right there, but they're also important pollinator plants. And the monarch butterflies rely on those wildflowers during their migrations. TxDOT has actually been planning and maintaining wildflowers on the highway right of way since the mid 1930s. So uh, they're very important, obviously, to our state. We see them every spring. Definitely something that uh, beautifies our roadway. So hopefully we keep those safe, Mike. Yeah, and just, in, just in general, you know, with all the folks that are going to yeah. be like you said, but uh, just in general, don't, you know, pull off the side of the highway. You know, it's got to be safe when you're taking those those pictures. All right. Another Eclipse glasses giveaway coming up uh, later on this afternoon. Cassie's going to be out there at Ikea, 1000 Ikea RBFCU Parkway from 5 to 7 p.m. And it's you get out there, say hi. And he's going to be obviously doing some uh, live hits during the, the newscast at 5 and 6 as well. So yeah, bunch of glasses to give away, but uh, get out there early. All right, beautiful start to the morning. Lots of clear skies out there. It is not as cool as yesterday and the day before that, but still jacket weather. We've got some 40s out there around Rio Medina and Hondo 56 here in town, 55 up the road in comfort. Humidity is, well, it's gone up just a little bit. I mean, not anything really substantial compared to the past couple of days. We still basically have very dry air in place and that will be the case throughout the day. However, look what happens overnight tonight. All this humidity just pumps back on in here and we're going to have more clouds around some mist drizzle, maybe some patchy fog in the morning and that humidity sticks around throughout the day. So it is definitely going to be well, kind of a leaning toward the steamy side. We are going to have a lot of clouds, though, hanging around here tomorrow. Um, as far as the computer models, clear skies right now. 
Then we go into, like I said, tomorrow, these clouds start to work their way back in here throughout the, the morning hours. They stick around throughout most of the day by tomorrow, maybe even, a, like I said, a sprinkle. But tomorrow night, we have a better chance for a couple of showers. But then notice how things start to clear out by Sunday. That's that bit of a front that moves on through here Saturday night into Sunday. That's going to knock the humidity down as well. Very short lived though. Sunday's going to be a pretty nice day. Humidity surges right back in here Monday. We are going to have a lot of uh, clouds hanging around here. Not only those high clouds, but a lot of low clouds with that moisture, which will just pump back on in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So I wish I could say something else. It, it just is not looking really great for the eclipse viewing on Monday. Today, again, just a fantastic day. And it's also going to be on the breezy side today. So we've got that red flag warning out in our extreme western counties. Then we have lots of clouds tomorrow, a couple of showers late tomorrow night. Sunday, set a decent looking day on the warm side. Fair amount of clouds around here on Monday. We do have a chance for some uh, thunderstorms late Monday that will extend into Tuesday and early Wednesday and then clear on out in behind that. More after this. Stick around. Steph, I'm so excited. We're in full blown. We're like fiesta session. Uh, I, season is upon us. Yeah, just a few weeks away. Very I, close. I'm so, so excited. So one of the most popular events during all fiesta, of course, is NIOSA. Yes, big turnout all the time. <laughs> so the NIOSA committee works all year long making the flowers you, you'll see at the big event. So we were wondering just how many flowers the NIOSA committee makes. We make about 14,500 flowers in all different colors. <laughs> Steph, wow. wow. <laughs> That's a lot of flowers. Yeah. Niosa takes place from April 23rd through the 26th. You can read more about it on ksat.com. And here's something else to check out while you're on our website. More Fiesta Fun, the 2024 Fiesta Bike Parade is happening on April 13th. It's an event for all ages and we'll celebrate bike culture in the Alamo City. You can read more about it on our website at kset.com. That'll be fun. Another way to get outside. I need to put start putting up the Fiesta decorations outside of my house. I, I have uh, the papel picado, yeah. you know, but that's it. I need more. You already put it out? Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> you know, you're way ahead. Well, just, uh, yeah, just what, look, baby steps. Baby steps. All right. It's 529 and 56 degrees. Well, from San Antonio to Kerrville and everywhere in between, our community is getting ready for a huge influx of visitors for the solar eclipse. Up next, how local businesses are looking to cash in on the celestial event. Good morning, welcome back. It is 532. Happy Friday and closer to Fiesta. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for Fiesta. You have all your way of it as well. I know you have uh, so I got many. A few. I got a few ready to go. Yeah, yeah ready to bust them out here. <laughs> Special occasion way of it as <laughs> already got my metal sash. I already have some yeah. medals on it, ah, so I'm, yes. I'm happy about that. But we got to get through. You know, it's going to be Eclipse first, yeah. and, yes. and then all of a sudden, it's just going to be you know pedal the metal get into to Fiesta mode here. So, all right, the last of the just spectacular days today. Yesterday, it was it was pretty hot out there, 80 degrees. Thank goodness we had dry air and very low humidity. Good flying weather right now. As you see that plane uh, coming in there to land on to the southeast on runway 13, 56 degrees right now. So we're at a normal low temperature. We'll drop down a few more notches. Still have pretty dry air, clear skies as you can see, and uh, basically light wind out there. Uh, mid 50s, we were hovering in the 60s in the hill country. So we're again starting that cooling process. And down, you got some 40s out there in portions of Medina County, 47 over at Hondo. And later on today, with the dry air in place, and it's going to start to get windy and that prompts red flag warnings in our western counties from 1 until 7 o'clock tonight. As far as temperatures, we'll be close to yesterday's 88 degrees. Again, normal high is in the upper 70s right now, so closer to that at noon, 85 high temperature. It's going to be breezy, like I said today, and then we'll start to see a few more clouds move in here tonight and then plenty of clouds as we go overnight into tomorrow. And of course, the great Texas air show out there at uh, Randolph. Well, it's going to be a nice day. It is going to be very humid, so dress appropriately for that. Lots of sunscreen and we have to 75 degrees, so it's not going to be as hot. But again, we'll have that humidity out there with uh, plenty of clouds, but still great day to get out there and uh, see all the, the airplanes and 
and the Thunderbirds later on in the afternoon. I'll mention that again. Anyway, more on the eclipse forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. So we've still got some problems out there, right, RJ? Yeah, Mike. All right. So we are off to a busy start here for your Friday morning if you are about to step outside and hit the roadway. So let's run through everything that's going on. Again, a very busy start to our Friday morning. Loop 410 southbound. We have a crash that has closed the exit ramp at uh, Rigsby Avenue. So this camera here is at East Houston. You see this buildup of traffic already. We have the crash scene a little bit further ahead here. So we do believe that a driver there actually struck uh, the column that's holding up the overhead sign there over at Loop 410 South. And we have tech stock crews, maintenance crews on the scene right now, but causing a pretty good delay there in this area. As we take a look at our maps, again, that right here is where we have East Houston Street. Already seen a buildup there, potentially going all the way up to 410 and I-10. The other big incident that we're following right now, I-10 westbound at Loop 16 to 4. A couple of different things here. We have a stalled vehicle closer to UTSA Boulevard and a crash right there at uh, I-10 West at 16 this has blocked the entire exit there in both directions for 1604 at the Cloverleaf in that area. Northeast side now, 35 southbound, still ongoing construction here. Three main lanes closed uh, from Shirts Parkway to the Forum Parkway, and hopefully within the next half hour, they can go ahead and wrap up some of the construction that we're seeing in this area. So the situation on the east side and on the northwest side, see a lot of flashing lights here again. I-10 West at uh, 1604. The exit to 1604 is currently shut down at the moment because of a crash. We'll continue to follow the very latest, give you more updates as they become available. Stephanie, Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Well, this morning we are getting a look at the man suspected of hitting and killing a mother and her child Wednesday night on Stone Oak Parkway. 56-year-old Marlon Daniels is accused of intoxication manslaughter. The victims are 39-year-old Vanessa Ramos and her 5-year-old son, Solomon Lopez. Police say the mom was pushing Solomon in a stroller when a car hit them both not too far from where they lived. People in that area say they're not surprised, though, because so many people drive so recklessly. We hear the motors like every day coming down Stona Parkway. So hopefully after all this, we'll start getting some more patrols. The state transportation department shows there have been eight other alcohol related crashes along this street since January of last year and two dozen others related to speeding. Well, two candidates for Bear County Commissioner are divided over a proposed park on the city's northwest side. Come late May, Precinct 1 voters will decide between incumbent Rebecca Clay Flores and Amanda Gonzalez as a Democratic candidate for commissioner. The winner could oversee the next steps for the highly controversial proposed park. So remember, Bear County has budgeted nearly $3 million for the potential 50 acre project. As a Democratic primary election runoff gets closer, these candidates have different opinions about the park, but both say community input is key. This is about um, community demand and meeting the needs of our constituents. I would do everything in my power to make sure that we are uh, slowing down the process the runoff election is May 28th. The winner will face Republican candidate Lena Prado in November. A Texas National Guard member is facing human smuggling charges after he was arrested following a high-speed chase in Kinney County. So this is dash camera video from the arrest this past Sunday. A spokesperson for Kinney County identified the National Guardsman as Savian Johnson. Johnson is accused of leading law enforcement on a chase after speeding away from a border checkpoint. At some point during that chase, Johnson stopped and a person believed to be a migrant got out of the vehicle and ran. Johnson then continued driving. However, law enforcement was able to use spike strips to stop him. Well, it's a busy travel weekend and this morning we're learning about a growing concern at airports happening across the country. As ABC's Lionel Moyes reports, there's a huge spike in security breaches. This morning, a troubling new report about the number of people who've breached airport security in the last year, including an incident from February when a woman at the Nashville airport bypassed security, sneaking past officers before boarding a flight to L.A. And last month, a man without a ticket was caught taking pictures of other passengers boarding passes at the Salt Lake City Airport to board a flight. He was removed just before takeoff. A TSA spokesperson tells the Washington Post of at least 
300 cases nationwide in the last year where people have bypassed airport security, a huge increase from previous years. Just 72 cases were reported in 2022, only 29 in 2019. Some of the factors, the spike in post-pandemic travel and mental illness. There's certainly some concern when you see security breaches. However, at the same time, there's no such thing as a perfect security system. A TSA spokesperson calling it a trend, saying the number of breaches is a larger number than we realized. The most common cases were passengers re-entering secured areas through exit-only lanes. Other times, including that recent case in Nashville, officials say people were just tired of waiting. Is it something that the traveling public should be alarmed about? Not in my opinion, it's certainly concerning about Let's strengthen that vulnerability, but nothing to be concerned about. The, supply, the skies continue to remain safe. Airport officials say they're working to address this trend with ideas including new barriers and one-way gates. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. It's 540 and 56 degrees. So if you're looking for an easy flower to grow in your garden, coming up next we're going to show you why zinnias might be the cure for your non-green thumb. Super easy, I promise. Okay. It's it, anyone can do it. I swear. <laughs> <We'll try. laughs> and it's a great time to get out and garden. It's been beautiful outside. Got up to 88 degrees yesterday. Maybe another day to go outside and enjoy before that humidity creeps back in over the weekend. Michael, explain when we come back. Well, back to 543. So if you're looking for an inexpensive, vibrant annual flower to plant by seed, Look no further than zinnias, right? Yes. Okay. So not only are they showstoppers, but pollinators flock to them. And this Gardening with Kset, I'll show you how to plant zinnias from seed and how to collect seeds for next year. She's the main character, she's popular, she's sassy, and can bloom in the triple digits. And you can plant a lot of her for very cheap. Oh, hey, zinnias, we're talking about you, girl. Zinnias are also the easiest flowers to grow from seed, great for beginner gardeners, and she makes you look like a professional. So I cut the heads of all my zinnias before that big freeze in December. I saved them, dried them out in a paper bag for several weeks, and here is how you're gonna save money for next year. Take those dried out heads, pull the dried petals off. You see that arrowhead shape at the bottom? That's your seed. So that one seed you planted just gave you several dozen. If you are starting from scratch, you can get a variety of zinnia seeds at Rainbow Gardens. Just a couple of packets are under $10. Plant in a place that gets full sun and sprinkle on soil. Then oh so lightly, cover or press into the soil. If they are too deep, they will not germinate. Water every day on a gentle setting. When the seedlings sprout, water the roots, not the tops, or they might burn when it gets hot. In about a week to 10 days, they will sprout up and start to look like this. If you want them to grow like bushes and keep producing flowers, cut the heads after peak blooming. Happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, they look pretty, the zinnias. Oh, they're beautiful. And I'm telling you, anyone can... <laughs> you and Rooney can do this. You've got this. We shall see. And then remember, have Luis remember to water, because oh, I know yeah. you'll forget. Yeah, he's, he's better at that than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Family effort. <laughs> 545, 56 degrees. Man, that incident at Loop 410 in East Houston still happening. Also at 10 in UTSA Boulevard. RJ Marquez is busy this morning. He's going to keep us updated when we come back. With the total eclipse being just days away, the San Antonio area is gearing up for the thousands of out-of-town guests that are expected to visit. All right, so meteorologist Mia Montgomery shows us how this uptick in visitors could actually help our economy. This time around, it's gonna get even better. Here we go again. October's annular eclipse brought an influx of visitors to the San Antonio area, but even back then, hoteliers and city leaders already had their sights set on April 8th's total eclipse. Remember this? October has some, some energy behind it, but the April one is sold out. Thousands of out-of-town guests are once again expected to visit Bear County and the Hill Country for another celestial event that truly is out of this world. Hotels are booked out, reservations are booking up, and the list of events happening throughout the weekend goes on and on and on. 
and we've never had anything to compare this to. Um, so we are anticipating to easily double to triple in population. Leaders with area visitor bureaus like Kerrville's Leslie Jones are anticipating yet another economic boost. We will definitely see a significant spike, definitely in sales tax and in hotel occupancy tax. Um, so it'll be a nice little boom for our, our local economy. An opportunity that isn't available to just any city in the United States, but one that's happened twice in a matter of six months in the San Antonio area. It was a blessing you know, that comes in with having not only one eclipse, but two eclipses, which is incredibly rare for one only destination. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Very Lady, cool. I was out in New Valley in October yeah. covering it, and you know, thank goodness the clouds <laughs> broke up at that time. But uh, the yeah. lady who runs the, uh, the convention area out there, not really convention center, but the, the large area yeah. where we were uh, viewing that, she had emailed me a few weeks back and said, if you want to come out here, we don't have anything specifically planned, but I'm hosting 400 astronomers from around the world. Wow. Just 400. Out there. Yeah. And that's just Small one down. of the locations yep. of the hundreds of locations that hundreds of people are going to be flocking to. Wow. Yeah. So if you have questions... You'll get answers. <laughs> yeah. And For don't sure. forget, you don't just have to go west into the, the hill right. country like that. You can go up 281 and yeah. go north because the, the path of it is kind of is up to the, the northeast like that. So oh, we're kind of lucky in this area. And of course the big question is clouds. Yeah. It's just oh, yeah. not looking that great. All right, yes. Oh. And uh, before we get back to Mike here, we're gonna give us a quick check of our traffic here as we take a look there. Loop 410 southbound at uh, Rigsby got a pretty big backup there because of a crash. A driver struck one of the overhead signs there over 410 south. So we got a pretty good backup there for our drivers on the east side. We're gonna show you a map here real quick. Wanna show you another uh, big crash that we're following right now. I-10 westbound UTSA Boulevard we have the cloverleaf that is also shut down in this area here from westbound to loop 1604 and let's show you a map exactly what's going on there because we also have a disabled vehicle this is going to be on the eastbound lanes of uh, i-10 so eastbound disabled vehicle westbound i-10 right there at that cloverleaf right now we have 1604 that exit is closed and it's not unfortunately due to construction let's take you back to the east side here and show you some of this buildup of traffic that we're looking at in this area again it's 410 southbound at rigsby avenue good thing is that we kind of are getting traffic through this area. Haven't seen this buildup uh, go all the way to I-10, but as we get to our six o'clock hour, that might actually end up being the case. And of course, our ongoing construction here on the northeast side, still following the situation there, southbound 35 construction, Search Parkway to the Forum. All right, we've been talking a lot about the air show. We know that this is gonna be a big event taking place here uh, this weekend amongst all the other things that's going on here. So just wanna give a heads up to people headed out to the air show. There's gonna be a couple of the main gates here that are going to be for the public. If you're coming in from the north part of JBSA Randolph, you're going to enter through the main gate off of FM 78. And if you're coming in from the south part here of JBSA Randolph, you're going to enter on Lower Seguin Road. So a couple of the main entrances there. The exit gate is going to be on FM 1518. But either way, all of our folks around the Converse area, 1604 area, just keep in mind, we're going to see a lot more people out there on the roads uh, this weekend as we get set for that awesome air show. But again, current traffic conditions, I-10 westbound, UTSA Boulevard, Loop 410 South at Rigsby Avenue. All right, Mike, uh, how are things looking outside this morning? It's been uh, This morning looks, looks fantastic. You know, all the air show tomorrow and uh, make sure you have plenty of sunscreen and hydrate light because it is going to be definitely humid out there. It is gorgeous this morning. This is the last of the really, really fantastic weather. Obviously, it's not as cold as what it was at this time yesterday just because we were much warmer yesterday afternoon than we were were on Wednesday afternoon. So we got up to 88. We actually gained just about actually 39 degrees between the low and the high yesterday. And we're still going to have a huge warm up today. We'll drop down another couple of degrees this morning, bottoming out at 53. And again, then the very quick warm up with the dry air that's in place. So already at 75 at noon, we top off at 85 later on today. So still we're going to gain 30 plus degrees, which is still a huge swing in temperatures again because of that dry air. That's all going to be changing. So here's what goes on throughout the rest of today. Nothing but clear skies out there. Here comes the uh, the clouds. The humidity surges back in here overnight. Maybe a couple little sprinkly showers around some mist and uh, drizzle, especially in the morning. And they're going to keep a, a fair amount of clouds around here. So yeah, air show is going to be nice. Probably going to be a low show, as they call it, for the, uh, the Thunderbirds in the afternoon with all the, the cloud cover out there. Going into tomorrow night then, uh, maybe a couple of showers. Here's that front that works its way 
way on through here early, early Sunday morning. That's going to clear us out pretty nicely for Sunday and then also drop the humidity on Sunday. That's not going to last very long brief because that humidity bounces right back in here very quickly early on Monday morning, and that means the clouds are going to be coming back in here pretty good on Monday. And then by Monday night, we do have a chance for uh, some thunderstorms around here and that then rain chance that window is going to extend into the middle of next week. So again, today, the last of the just spectacular days, a lot of clouds tomorrow, more humidity, a couple of you know mist drizzle in the morning and then a few uh, storms. Then there are a few shower storms late tomorrow night, early Sunday, clearing Sunday. Plenty of clouds around here on Eclipse Monday. More after this. Stick around. A lot more still to come on GMSA. RJ, very busy this morning, standing by with a traffic update. We've got a big impact at 10 in UTSA, and he's going to update that press in just a bit.